was a big day, but it is just one step in this process, an important step. We still have a lot of work to do to get this signed into law. And I know that our friends over in the Senate are eager to get to work. <laughs> they are. <laughs> we're going to see that work through. You know why we're going to see this work through? Because the issues are just too important. The stakes are just too high. The problems facing American families are real. And the problems facing American families as a result of Obamacare are just too dire and too urgent. So the bill is out of the House, over to the Senate. Will Senate Republicans unite around this bill the way their counterparts did in the House? House Majority Whip Steve Scalise joins me now. It was a squeaker of a vote. You were the one responsible for counting all of the votes, apparently. Um, what do you say to Nancy Pelosi, who had all of those dire warnings for Republicans? <laughs> well, anybody who takes a political advice from Nancy Pelosi will be relegated to a life of political extinction so she can continue to try to defend Obamacare. It's failing the American people. We've promised for years that we would get rid of this law, uh, replace it with reforms that actually lower premiums and put patients back in charge of their health care decisions instead of Washington bureaucrats. So I can understand why she wants to continue to hold on to this sinking ship. Uh, but we're providing relief for families. We're going to follow through on this promise, and it's going to be really important relief to lower premiums. There has been an awful lot of questions about people who have pre-existing conditions. Are they going to lose some kind of coverage or the ability to pay for their health care under this new proposal? No, they're not. And in fact, we put multiple layers of protection in this bill for people who have pre-existing conditions. And in fact, I think if you look right now under Obamacare, if you've got a pre-existing condition, uh, in many cases, you're paying uh, exorbitant amounts. And a lot of people, I get letters from families that say they've got like $12,000 deductibles. So they're paying a really high premium. And then every time they go to the doctor, they're paying pretty much everything out of pocket because of the high deductible. So this law does not work. For, for them, they want relief. We're going to give it to them in this bill uh, by making sure that they actually have protection in multiple ways. With We put in place risk pools that actually lower premiums for people with pre-existing conditions. The previous iteration of the bill, the one that was never actually presented for a vote, it was suggested that 20, 24 million people would lose their health insurance under that earlier proposal. But does that include people who are now covered under Obamacare because they have to? They are required to buy it, and under this new proposal, they simply might opt to go without insurance? Yeah, that was one of the many flaws in the CBO report. And look, they're the referee that you have to use. But at the same time, look at their report. In just the first year, uh, they said 10 million people will lose coverage. And of course, I read through that and I said, that's not possible because we have a transition in the first two years. All we do is give people freedom to buy whatever they want. They don't have to buy Obamacare. And so they call that lost coverage. I call that freedom. In fact, many of those people will get much better plans uh, than Obamacare. Uh, so ultimately, uh, that's what people want is the choice to buy their own plan at a lower cost and with better options for their family. What about tort reform? Do you see that coming? Because isn't that part of the problem? Doctors are dropping out of the marketplace because malpractice insurance is so high. Yeah, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of these tests that doctors run, they'll tell you, have nothing to do with the health care of their patient. It has to do with the fear of frivolous lawsuits. And so it jacks up the cost of health care uh, by estimates of, in some cases, over $100 billion a year. And so we have a bill uh, to actually do real medical liability reform. Unfortunately, that bill takes 60 votes in the Senate, unlike 51 with the bill that we passed yesterday. Mm. We're going to bring that bill anyway. We're going to bring bill to, bills to allow people to buy insurance across state lines, something that's a really powerful powerful tool to lower cost. We just passed a bill to the Senate to allow people to pool together, too, and get the buying power of a big company. We have to say goodbye. Congressman Steve Scalise of Louisiana, thank you. Good being with you. Thanks. Be right back.